Hey folks, hope you enjoyed the podcast. This free teaser of the main episode features 10 posts, but you can get the full episode with an additional 20 posts, plus our witty banter and all that good stuff, plus fun segments like MGTOW and This Ain't It Chief, plus a preview of next week's episode, only over at patreon.com slash report this post. Not only that, but there's an additional bonus episode every week for our beautiful patrons and other fun stuff, all available at patreon.com slash report this post. Help support the show. It'll do a lot for us. It'll make us feel better about spending all of our goddamn free time looking up posts for your guys' uh, amusement. And enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 140 of Report This Post, the podcast about bad posts and bad people. My name is Geiger, and that is Christian. You shall not post. And we are your hosts with those posts every week. Christian, myself, or a listener, select a different topic and then find horrible posts for your listening pleasure. And this week's topic, as chosen by junior co-producer Christian is Lord of the Rings. Uh, the seminal work by J.R.R. Tolkien. And uh, Peter Jackson, who yes. some would argue is uh, uh, better than Tolkien at showing the world of Tolkien. More responsible for getting more people interested in it, for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. I would say. Yeah. Now you're uh, do you, you you recently uh, became obsessed with this thing? Uh, yeah, so kind of out of nowhere, it feels like. Okay, so here's here's me. Gonna, I'm going to be sincere about why oh, why boy. that is. So, um, my kid um, got interested in the uh, 1977 Rankin Bass Hobbit animated movie, where she wanted to watch it every single day, and it harkened back to when I was a kid. Uh, we talked about it in the D and D episode. My dad was a big or is a big high fantasy guy. He used to do D and D. He would paint miniatures. He was in all that shit. And, uh, in one of his only attempts to connect with me during my childhood, uh, he wrote, read, read the Hobbit to me when I was a kid. And mm-hmm. like, that's the only thing that we currently, uh, as two adult men have any similar interest in. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I'm now passing that on to my child so that hopefully that'll stick with her as well. Yeah, so you already got the one thing out of the way the as far as connecting with your child. <laughs> that's pretty nice. Don't you have to? Don't ever have to think about it again. Fifteen years, I can coast. So mm-hmm. get it, get it in early. So that's mm-hmm. the reason. Yeah. So uh, just remind me of nostalgia and uh, a childhood uh, that wasn't great, but also could have been worse. So. Sure. Yeah, can't imagine my dad ever reading to me. That would have been <laughs> that would have been way too much work. Way he's too got, much the, to he's think got about. the sports book and he's just making him do do numbers on the horses. Yeah. Okay, that's what you meant by sports book. I don't know if you meant like okay. <laughs> like ES, ESPN magazine. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> like a sports ball book or whatever. Yeah, a book about sports or the book from uh, Back to the Future Two. That sports book, <laughs> that one we all know. Uh, yeah. We did a time travel episode, folks. Go back and listen to that. Hmm. Couldn't tell you when that was. Um. Uh, so yeah, Lord of the Rings. My exposure is uh, through the movies, which I'm a big fan of, uh, except for uh, The Hobbit. Uh, mm. I, I saw the first one in the theaters in the 60 FPS thing. Ooh, it's rough. It's rough. I was excited. I was like, you know what? It's probably not going to look good, but it'll be something interesting. And, uh, you know, like going to movies, seeing different things. And um, I don't remember one frame of that fucking movie, but I do remember there was a lot of them. And uh, yeah. it was very uh, not not too pleasurable to look at. Uh, it looked pretty silly. You got uh, you got 
um, what's his face? Um, the little guy. The Gollum? Hobbit guy. You know. Uh, Bilbo? Well, no, but the guy played, uh, God, they always I forget his name. I don't know that name. guy's name. That guy's just generic English actor. He, uh, is Martin Freeman mm-hmm. doing, doing his, uh, just playing himself. Yep. And then you've got a book that's like 149 pages long or something turned into uh, three four-hour movies. Inexplicable uh, how they how they managed not, to do that. Not good. Really would have been interesting to see uh, Guillermo del Toro's take on, on that one. But, sure. Uh, that probably would have faced a equal or if not more backlash from fans of the Peter Jackson stuff. So. Yeah, so uh, we'll we, uh, we'll we can look forward to uh, all these things being remade in the next couple of years or whatever. There's apparently sure. some sort of Amazon series which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Yeah, it takes place in the second age of Middle Earth, though, so it's a little different. But whatever the hell be that means, just elves and stuff flying around mm. doing uh, MCU style stuff. Oh, so hell that'll be yeah. fun. I uh, I I, tr- I started to read uh, the first book and uh, there's so many like singing, so much singing in it that was. Oh like, yeah, there's a lot of poetry in big time. Yeah. I'm not reading books for poetry, you know. <laughs> it's not why I read. I'm not queer. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, why don't we just go ahead and get started with the posts? Okay, excellent. So let's start off with the most important question that's probably on everyone's minds when they heard what this topic was. Uh-huh. This is a thread from our Tolkien fans. I know this is a strange question, but is there circumcision in Middle Earth? Mm. The dungeon master of my Dungeons and Dragons group is running a campaign set in Middle Earth and all of the elves are circumcised. I thought this was weird because it's not like there was a Middle Earth version of Abraham going around cutting off foreskin. But my DM thinks elves would probably be circumcised because it's cleaner, and elves generally have a clean vibe. For example, no body hair, etc. What do you guys think? And Belagorn replied, Circumcision is not cleaner, being hygienic is. And a now-deleted user responded, When anyone presents that argument, I just think that guy thinks he doesn't need to wash his dick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He don't. I certainly... <laughs> I've never bothered with this stuff. <laughs> Ah, that vile worm betwixt my legs. <laughs> no attention paid. Yeah. Uh, do you need to know if uh, what characters are circumcised in your Dungeons Boy, and Dragons? Boy, you know, group? why is that coming up? That's interesting, isn't it? Uh, we we had a similar <laughs> post in the Dungeons and Dragons episode about circumcision of various races. Uh, don't know why it would come up. Uh, why it would be important to the campaign? But you're you're. <laughs> What's your character, a moil? You're like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. See, that, that 11, would matter. 11, 17 moil, and I need to go and suck the foreskins off of all maybe, the elves of Maybe Miller. it's like the foreskins like another place to store items or something, <laughs> so that might have something to do with it. You're over-encumbered. You have too much loot in your foreskin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I remember I've seen... Uh, I've seen like uh, character checklists you can for these things where you like fill out these forms of like what's your character's eye color, what's your character's sure. favorite hobbies, what's their birthday, and uh, I'm sure there's just extended versions of those. With, you know, <laughs> are they circumcised? Do, Do they, they have, have a club foot? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what's the tail situation? Do they are have they a tail? Poly? Yeah. Yeah. Or do they yeah. have vitiligo? Just those normal questions you want to know about. Yeah, I'm a level 18 wizard. I do have alopecia, mm-hmm. so the beard is not an option for me, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, speaking of, several months ago it was announced that a new video game about Gollum is being released soon. And apparently the developers decided to give Gollum more hair than he had in the <laughs> movies because they felt it made him look less creepy. And a gentleman on Facebook named Gary said this about that. I can't relate to a be- to being a slave to a ring and cannibalism. I can't relate to a three-foot fantasy creature. I can't relate to wanting to murder someone to be a slave again to an evil ring. I do, however, understand what's happening and how Gollum is that way because of storytelling. If this kind of bullshit keeps happening, it will distort the actual story into bullshit. Many, many, many generations, the retellings of Lord of the Rings will be very different from the books and even our original movies. 
Because let's be honest, how many of you actually have read a book before the movies? Or even read a book at all recently? PC culture bullshit. <laughs> yeah, this uh, this PC culture bullshit is removing male pattern baldness from that <laughs> epic tale of little guys running around. Uh, I hate when that happens. Uh-huh. A Gollum video game sounds, ooh, not good. Why would you? <laughs> hmm. Well, <laughs> I mean, well, I guess if if like if you can switch between him and the uh, Smeagol, yeah, the like good there's one? some sort of Jekyll and Hyde thing there you could play with, I guess. <sighs> Uh, have them crawl around and <laughs> collect coins it's like, and it's shit. Like Hitman, like you're sneaking up on mm-hmm. people. Oh, actually, I'm looking at I'm looking at stuff of it now, and that's like exactly. What it's yeah, like. you're gonna play a lot of it. Probably. You're gonna spend twelve hours a day playing this here real soon. <laughs> oh, yeah. it looks bad. It doesn't oh, yeah? look good. I'm sure it can't. You can't. You just can't make a good game out of something like this. No, it's just not gonna happen. And this, it's like stylized, it's like cartoony stylized. Well, if it looks like, like the Rankin weird... and Bass thing, that would be cool. No, it looks more like, like it looked like World of Warcraft, like Ugh. the like hyper uh, proportions on everybody. Really weird. I don't understand the art direction on this one. Yeah, this looks like shit. He does have more hair, though. Gotta get so. in that. He is, uh, for some reason, they care about that. <laughs> Not even sure why that conversation would even come up. Just, <laughs> yeah, this guy looks creepy. We gotta give him more hair, and then a bald guy on Facebook's like, "Hold on, yeah." Now wait a second. By the way, he also uh, looks uh, probably even creepier with the hair. So that's kind yeah, of yeah. Doesn't an issue. look good. <laughs> <laughs> the he just sort of is not that. good. Yeah, looks really bad with that hair. That stringy mess of a hair. Good lord. Yeah, he has hair just well, like. Uh, yeah, everyone's everyone's mom's boyfriends that they don't like. <laughs> That's just what you want in your video game. Comes home from work, takes off the Chargers cap that he wears every day. It's just stained with sweat. And uh-huh. It's just matted to it's just <laughs> those eight strings of hair just matted to his scalp. Yeah, mm. it looks really bad. <laughs> Good God, just chaw right in the lip. Oh yeah. Big load. <laughs> Big mm. load right in the mouth, yep. <laughs> User Mike Hannigan 20, 2002 asked, L, ugh, asked R, Lord of the Rings, how would Middle Earth handle a COVID-19 situation? I feel like entire cities will fall naturally because of how quickly it spreads, but maybe the dwarves, isolated as they are, will be untouched. And Mr. Penguin's Poppins replied, no, COVID-19, as serious as it is, is nowhere near the worst plagues that have afflicted us through human history. Maybe in terms of total body count, it will be high, but we have a population numbering in the billions. As a percentage of the population, when all is said and done, it will hardly even be a blip on the radar. I consider us lucky that our first case of a massive global pandemic is relatively mild as COVID-19 rather than something comparable to the Black Death. And the Big Red added... They would probably go out and buy all the toilet paper. LMAO. That's pretty good. Yeah, uh, really. Bring, sort of making the mood a little more, a little more fun there, <laughs> which I appreciate because it got a little too, got a little too a little uh, serious there. there. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> why are people asking these questions? You know, um, don't why, know. Why would you? <laughs> You're like, well, I'm on this uh, this subreddit, and uh, this thing is happening. I'm like, well, what if I combine them? Well, what would what would old Mister Bilbo do in this situation of COVID nineteen? Uh, same as the rest of us, and stay home. Mm-hmm. So. Which is which would make the movies a lot shorter. <laughs> <laughs> if he didn't let those that wily wizard in his door, we, we wouldn't have these. Four-hour epics. You're mm-hmm. right. That big white wizard. Mm. He's not white till later. Well, I, nah, I, there's a lot of Mayo white boys in this, which we will <laughs> definitely talk about in a little bit. Found this post on Tumblr. 
I rewatched Lord of the Rings the other day, and you know what I really appreciate? The men are so tender. They cry, they kiss each other's foreheads and hug, and call each other my friend and my dear, and they're respectful to women and faithful to their partners. They have banter without being creepy and sleazy, and really none of that stops them from being considered manly. More Lord of the Rings men, please. And a gentleman responded with, I feel like women just friend zone those kind of men, though. So, <laughs> um, I can say uh, from recent experience, uh, women do not like men <laughs> who are in touch with their feelings at all. Uh, yeah. Big turnoff for the ladies. Uh, they don't want to hear about your shit whatsoever. So, Especially if they're insane. Hmm. Uh, that seems to be a problem as well. Yeah. That's also a connecting thread of the issues that I've been having in the dating world. Um, bitches be crazy. Yeah, yeah that's Well, right. when you show up to the date with no shoes on and you got your pipe <laughs> and you're, you're four feet tall, <laughs> women are just, they're really, they're just not in. Oh, I got, oh, friend zoned again. Yeah. Guess I'll just hopping down the path. Guess I'll just go yeah. kiss my friend. And, hey, you know, why not? At this point, I'm open to anything. Mm-hmm. Let's, uh, as long as I don't get banished away into the pits of Mordor mm. by my male friends. So we call my asshole. Ooh, lots of merchandise for Lord of the Rings out there. Uh-huh. Uh, lots of stuff. And I found a pair of socks featuring Samwise and Frodo on them, along with gigantic text stating, Hobbits made me gay. The description reads, Come on, the chemistry between Frodo and Sam, between Boromir Boromir and Aragorn, between Bilbo and Thorin, the second you start shipping them was the moment you knew. Mm. Hobbits are gay, and no one can convince me otherwise. For those who Lord of the Rings who want to show off their gay pride and nerd pride, this one's for you. Uh, So obviously this is not official merchandise. Mm -hmm. It's on one of those wacky... uh, fan-made sites but a guy named william j wrote a review for these socks these are super plush and soft bought these as a gift so no report from the new owner but my wife now wants some (laughs) yeah there's a lot Mm. of uh, a lot of hobbits made me gay stuff online i'm curious to to see that Mm -hmm. there's also oh there's also D D made me gay Hmm. Believable on both counts, sure. Uh, my lo- my wife, ooh, honey, I see you got the. It's Thursday night. You got your hobbits made me gay socks on. Ooh, it's time for sexy and evening in. Uh, let's see. Gay Lord of the Rings is a tag on this website. Lookhuman dot com. Star Wars made me gay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh. Let's see. Feminist elves against the one ring. Mm. Mm. <laughs> what the? F- Who is that for? What the? F- <laughs> uh, <laughs> here's a shirt that's the PlayStation logo, but it says Gay Station. I think I might get okay, that one, actually. Okay, that's I'm pretty gonna, good. I'm going to get that one. Uh yeah, there's a lot of good stuff here. Oh, there's a whole bunch of feminist elves against the One Ring designs here. Like, how many are we se- like? More I'm than a dozen? I'm se- eh, I'd say about a dozen. Yeah. Oh. That's about a dozen more than I would expect to find. Yeah. So for sure. Uh, wow. Well, yeah, I'm looking at it down too. <laughs> so these are all words I like. <laughs> <laughs> that's really what, well yeah it's all this seo shit there's some there's some six-year-old in china that's putting all this shit together just on a computer with seven guns pointed at their head <laughs> just to, <laughs> there's a cannon with a a wick <laughs> with a match just the sitting room. right next to Stand someone's up. about to light it He's got his boot up so he can just scrape it along the bottom. <laughs> yep, that's what every Chinese boy is dealing with right now. In China. <laughs> it's a really, 
They even they built the cannons too. It's a real fucked up thing they got over there. <laughs> My brother works at the cannon factory. <laughs> I work at the feminist <laughs> elf t shirt plant. <laughs> I found this on Tumblr. Was Tolkien an other kin? He seemed to admire the life of the hobbits and consider himself one, quote, an all but size. He connected on an inner spiritual level with that agrarian lifestyle and seemed to have a deep connection with this race he created for the world he built. Would this mean he was hobbitkin or halflingkin or simple hobbit hearted? Is it even possible to be otherkin or fictionkin within your own creation? If so, does that mean self inserts are really fiction kin types? Probably not, but Tolkien's identification with hobbits seems suspiciously like that of other kin. <coughs> Suspicious, apparently. Suspiciously, yeah. Mm. Uh, I think the thing is, the guy just uh, liked to stay at home. That was his whole deal. He mm-hmm. didn't like to do stuff. Yeah. Uh, so the characters in his books that he related to the most also just <laughs> like to stay home and not do stuff. So yeah, imagine it's, that. It's 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 bizarre that this person thinks that he's like a kinship with this character. That he made. <laughs> it's he he is this kind of guy and then he made the characters about like his life. That's it's not the <laughs> other way around. How could you think that? What is oh, wrong man. with your head to think that? <laughs> well the line in here too about uh about so does it mean self inserts are really fiction kin types uh i i mean yeah i guess <laughs> like if you're like writing about yourself and you insert yourself into your own thing is stephen yeah. king an author kin because of how many authors <laughs> he self inserts into his books <laughs> Is that what that he means? did insert? He did insert himself into one of his books. He's a character in uh, Ugh. I think it's Doctor Sleep. He he's he he writes himself into the book. That is um, absolute dog shit. Uh, he did well, that in one know, of the Dark Lord book or Dark, uh, not Dark Lord. Oh, dark, that's uh, what it is. It's the Dark Tower. They go yeah. and have to talk to Stephen King. That's right. Oof. You're scraping the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. For that stuff when you're like, uh, how do I get this plot hole closed? Oh, I'll go talk to myself. Yeah, and just okay, know cool. full well that no editor would even, <laughs> not even going to read the fucking thing. Just like, oh yeah, new Stephen What you got there, just... Steve, a 500 page manuscript? Great. Great. Let's get it printed. Wait, let's get on the shelves by the weekend. Do not give a <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah, just cash and checks. Ugh. Other kin, that's fun. We did it. Did we do a mini episode on other kin? We did another kin episode on patreon.com slash report this post. We like every once in a while, we haven't done it in a little bit. We like to do a uh, report this short, which is where we es- essentially do a full episode of uh, where we take a topic and we find posts for it, but we do about uh, half the number of posts. So it's a sort of mini episode it's always only just for patrons over at patreon.com slash report this post we should probably do one again soon just uh, to do it and well if we get to 500 patrons yes. on patreon we would do our special stormfront only report this short so uh that one will probably be a report this post oh no we're gonna <laughs> you can't do a report this short on stormfront come on it's it's too much. I don't want to have to draw that, but <laughs> well, well, you Just will. You, you as the Red Baron. Great. All right. <laughs> Speaking of Tumblr, I found another one from over there on a Tumblr called Lord of the Queers. Mm. Trans man Keeley, assuming that because the elf he's appreciating doesn't have obvious breasts, they're a trans woman, and thinking they have something in common. Then Dwalin decides to burst his bubble before he misgenders the elf to their face and embarrasses all of them. The elf in question actually is a trans woman, and Dwalin is the one who is wrong, but she didn't expect better from the rude, smelly dwarves, thinking with their dicks, the lot of them, incapable of understanding the subtle complexities of gender. Or, in which case elves and dwarves are still incapable of correctly gendering one another, but with the added complexity of assuming that their other race is closed-minded and incapable of understanding the concept of being born in the wrong body. Sixty years later, trans man Legolas and Gimli have a conversation that the other members of the Fellowship find hilariously unbelievable because, really? You honestly think that about each other? 
Uh, I've read all that and said to myself, don't know what the fuck any of this means. Yeah. So it feels like they're we interrupted like a fever dream. <laughs> None of these sentences really God, go together. I, I gotta post this. Trans trans uh Gimli, uh uh elf uh yeah, trans woman Legolas. Uh this boy. Sixty years later? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I guess that's the that's the time span between the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, oh, so sure. I'm assuming they just assumed you would know that by, and if you're on that post, you probably would know that. So, hmm. if you're subscribed to Lord of the Queers Tumblr, <laughs> you probably know exactly what this person's talking about. Uh, which is uh, which is weird. I don't. Yeah, I don't know what the hell's going on there. There's probably a whole backstory that I. Do not want to know about. Check out Lord of the Queers dot Tumblr dot whatever. Uh, they have all sorts of uh, stuff about uh, everybody uh, having uh, different genitals. Mm-hmm. So check it out. It's cool. I found this a uh, great review for The Return of the King, which was the third film in the series uh, by Cecil Selwyn over on Letterboxd. Mm. I got so bored I started thinking about the political appeal of Middle-earth, and maybe that kind of romanticized, uncomplicated, de-sexed image of feudalism just doesn't appeal to me? I don't know, but mixed with what I'm almost certain is a little bit of subconscious white supremacy from the filmmakers, I mean, come on, I begin to wonder. But if I had to step back a bit, I think the movie just may not be very welcoming to those who weren't head over heels for the previous entries. (laughs) I mean, consider that 90% of the character development happened in the first two films, so if the viewer isn't on board with things when Return of the King begins, they aren't going to be brought on going forward. So I'm left to watch events unfold that I don't care about, with characters I don't care about, rendered in a bland-as-heck visual aesthetic that I was never going to enjoy. I mean, how could I like it at that point? Gave it one star, and uh, user Olick responded, Yeah, the whiteness of the Lord of the Rings movies is pretty disturbing. Hmm. Yeah. Disturbing. Um, and that's why. Disturbing. Um, hmm. I like how this guy uh, watched three, four and a half movies, uh, four and a half hour long movies that he didn't like yeah. instead of literally doing anything else. Anything else you could do. But instead you sat down and then you wrote about how you didn't like them. Yeah. Well, so. you'll see. There's quite a bit of that on Letterboxd. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you go, it, it, these are fun. Like I, I've noted that almost every movie, if you sort by you know lowest rated, any like any movie that's considered good that has a uh-huh. good rating, if you sort by lowest, almost all the lowest uh, ratings are like this was boring. I fell asleep, and. Uh, that's it's it's most of the bad reviews are for people who just straight up did not watch the whole movie, and uh, which seems like makes sense. Uh, is that an is what's the threshold for saying you watched a movie? You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not sure. Like what? Yeah, what, how? What percentage of the film you have to see in order to have like a strong feeling on? I wouldn't rate any movie I didn't finish watching. Right. That seems fair. Yeah, that seems fair. <laughs> Uh, same with the book or anything else. It wouldn't even occur to me to do that. It's like if I went to a restaurant and didn't never got the food. Well, I guess you would rate it bad. Okay, see? So we found a if you went to order food but you never got it, that would be that would be a bad restaurant experience. Sure. I don't know if that's perfectly analogous, so But the whiteness of the movie ta- is if you never uh, taste the food is right? disturbing. Uh, See, okay, I can so, I can say like, you know, feel free to be like, yeah, maybe it could use more uh, representation or whatever. But to say that it's the whiteness is disturbing is an interesting word to use there. I, oh, okay. What's disturbing so the, about it exactly? The thing is, this is set in a a time frame that's supposed to be before. Like a colonialization in a in a land that is in the mid, it, you know, analogous to Europe. Sure. So, in the time frame that this is supposed to be set and everything, 
uh, there wouldn't be um, true uh, because their slave slaves had not been brought into the area. So <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was I mean, a for, sad dark time, wasn't it? Yeah. So uh, disturbing doesn't seem like a good yeah. Mm, very heavy handed. Yeah. Uh, but ah. you know, to be fair, they also didn't have dwarves and elves and ants and uh, things like that either. So you could probably throw in a, some sort of black person in there just for the hell of it. Well, there were the the Easternlings, which are in the Uruk-hai? Middle Eastern people. Is that what they're called? Well, no, that's a different thing. We'll get to that. We'll in a talk bit. about that in just a little. Bit. Actually, right now we will. We'll talk about it because uh, Chris X Cohen on uh, Twitter had some thoughts about Peter Jackson's film adapt- adaptations as well. Tolkien's story is deep, but Jackson's fun splattered in- into silly action scenes. The success of these amusing but un- entirely unartistic films is a sign of our reactionary money-fixed times. What I most hate is how they falsified the Lord of the Rings in order to attract fascist slash racist audiences. With Lurts, the first high-profile orc in the films, they unnecessarily allude to non-Europeans. Tolkien's racist stereotypes would be another discussion topic. I mainly wanted to point out that Lurtz is an unnecessary extra racist move in the film. The notion that whites had non-whites as hostile outsiders is seen throughout modern a modern racist lens. Mm-hmm. And a guy named Gary Warden replied, would you have felt less unsettled by Lurtz's outward appearance if he had resembled Azog, the great white orc? If so, why? And Chris responded, yes, because of Lurtz's hairstyle and his color and his face painting. Mm. So, yeah. I didn't know that this, guy's uh, name black was skin guy, <laughs> This black skin guy makes me very uncomfortable. If he had white skin, I would not feel as uncomfortable. Yeah. Lurtz is, that's like... That's like the, a nickname of a fat kid in school or something. That's not like a <laughs> not an intimidating orc name. <laughs> yeah, Lurtzkowski. Yeah, let's call him Lurtz. <laughs> let's call him Lurtz and throw his lunch in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> Which he's really not going to like. Uh, yeah, so uh, there's there's uh, th- those orcs there that call the Urukai, right? Yeah, the high orcs, yep. Uh, I, I, I will say in the movie when they uh, start digging those guys up out of the ground, mm-hmm. pretty disgusting and pretty cool. I'll also. tell you what. You know what it looks like to me? It looks like one of those uh, when you make a cake in the microwave in the the coffee cup and it gets all bubbly. Hmm. Mm, man, that looks good. I've never done that. <laughs> never done that. It looks, so. like, looks like a lava cake. Every time I see that scene, I'm like, damn, that looks like one of those fucking lava cakes. <laughs> It looks it looks good. It looks like a baby giraffe falling out of its mother. What are you talking about? It looks disgusting. Oh, just the, the mud around every, Oh man. <laughs> Give me a fucking scoop of that baby and some <laughs> vanilla ice cream. Mm. Let's do it. All right. Well, next time you come over when you're invited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Speaking of all that, a gentleman went to our Lord of the Rings to ask this. So what happened to the uruk after the war? Uh, and the most downvoted response was this. They eventually got Gondor citizenship, invented rap, and began to live on unemployment. Folks, I implore you to check out the Netflix movie Bright to see this very scenario in action on the big screen. Oh, uh, Check it out. <laughs> A real uh, cautionary tale is what you're saying? Uh, it's just uh, set in Los Angeles and all the gangbangers in their uh, Raiders hoodies are all orcs. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's interesting. It's very, very funny. It is very, uh, it is very heavy handed in its, uh, its depiction of these characters. So. That's kind of really uh, what happened in, uh, was it District 9? Remember when the mm. you see that one? Mm-hmm. Where the uh, these aliens came down to South Africa and they became like had to live in these ghettos. Sure. And uh, that's that's kind of the same sort of idea, but uh, uh, somehow that South African movie was less racist than what this guy it, on Reddit. Yeah, said. the uh, David Ayer's movie Bright is exceptionally racist in its depiction. <laughs> 
<laughs> of mythical races. Really good. Well, now I have to check, check it, it out. out. Yeah. Five stars. Right up my alley. Oh, it's so good.